November 12th and 13th, I'm flying there. Oh, and you're from LA, true Tommy. Well, you can come see my show in LA. Francisco is from Boston. Come see me, my show, A Paper Orchestra. The East Coast premiere is in Boston, Massachusetts. It's actually going to be in Amesbury, Massachusetts, which is near Newburyport. And, uh, and go get tickets. My show, uh, November 12th and 13th in Newburyport, uh, in Amesbury. And then two shows in December, December 10th and 11th, uh, out here in LA. And the show has, it's a, it's a, it's a stage reading. It's a performance of my upcoming uh, collection of paper orchestra. And uh, it asks the question, what if it's the smallest, almost forgotten moments that are the ones that shape us most? So if you're an aspiring writer, you're going to want to see this. These, it, I think it'll inspire you to create your own personal essays. And then, uh, and then after you show us about an hour, I tell two stories. And then afterwards, we have a Q&A. And people love the Q&A. It's about 20 minutes usually. And uh, because it's like we talk about the process. We talk about the work. People get a lot out of it. So if you want to come see me, go get your tickets now at michaeljammon.com slash live. So they're, t- they're going. This is your last chance probably to get, the, uh, to get the Boston or the Amesbury tickets because, I don't know, I'm going, I'm going to be on a plane soon. So I hope you'll come see me. And again, for L.A., come see me there. I'll be in um, Atwater, Atwater Village. At a great little theater we got there, small little theater. It's, these are cozy theaters, so it's not a lot of seats. So you go get your tickets while you can. Someone's giving me hearts. Well, thank you. If you have a question, I'm happy to answer your questions. Put it, um, I don't always see it in the comments, but if you put it in the question area, it's, a little, it's got a little question mark there, then I can go, uh, they're easy to find. Here's a question. Will you have more shows next year in LA? You can't make this year, unfortunately. Ah, Stefaroni. Uh, I don't know. It depends on, we may do a spring show. Uh, I'm not sure. It depends on, it depends on um, how these two show, you know, how these two show, if there's enough demand. Then I might do a spring show in LA, but I don't know. Will you be working on the King of the Hill reboot? Uh, as far as I know, no. <laughs> no one's asked me to, but uh, it's okay. I have other things that I'm doing. I don't even know what the status of that reboot is. As far as I know, they're just writing the pilot now. But if they ask me to and I'm free, I'll do it, sure. Right now, it's just a pilot as far as I know. Oh, oh people are joining. Hello, everyone. Welcome. If you got a question, put it in the question area. I'm going to talk for a few minutes. While I come to Alberta, Becca Max, um, people ask me, I got a lot of people in Toronto asking me to come to Toronto. So I don't know what city in Alberta you're interested in having me go to. But um, uh, why don't you, you can go to, you can either DM me your email address and tell me your city, or you can go to Michael, this is for all of you, go to michaeljammon.com slash upcoming. And uh, then you'll get a list of where I'll be forming, where I'll be touring with this. And just enter your email address and your city. That way I can notify you uh, when I'm there. And a lot of people, uh, am I frozen? I'm frozen? Oh, I don't think I'm frozen. Come to Providence soon with your show. Providence is not that far from Boston, the real Pamela. I'm actually north of Boston. Uh, The real, go Google. I might not be far from you. I don't know the map over there. I don't know that area that well, but... um, Go Google it. See how far Amesbury is from Providence. It might be like 40 minutes or something. Uh, okay, so yeah, I hope maybe you'll come. Maybe you'll make the drive the real Pamela or the fake Pamela. Well, who knows? Uh, if you weren't a screenwriter, what career would you be your plan B? I didn't have a plan B, guys. Don't tell my parents that. They'll have a they'll have a heart attack. I didn't have a plan B. Male model? Male model? No, that's not a plan B. Stupid. Uh what else we got here? Here's a question. Oh, what's your favorite how-to book on writing a TV pilot? I've never read a how-to book on writing a TV, TV pilot. The Solid Creative. Love the podcast. Cheers for all the info. Oh, thank you, The Solid Creative. You know what? If you like my podcast, tell a friend about it, would you? Tell two friends. I dare you. Tell two friends. That way you help me grow my podcast, and that's how you can repay me. I don't, I'm not asking for money. I'm just saying, hey, spread the love. You're not far. All right, I'll consider Amesbury. See? There you go. Really well, Pamela. Consider it. Uh, it's a small theater. So for tickets, you go to michaeljammon.com slash live. And, um, but it's a, nice old, it's a nice old theater. It's a nice venue. I saw I'm told. I've never been there. But that's where they I – saw, I saw pictures. Like, this is nice. Like an old uh, place. Good morning from Malaysia. Woo. Well, it's not morning here. It's yesterday. If I want to write gay characters, do I have to become gay and go on gay experiences? Asking for a friend. Sounds like you're looking for an excuse, my friend. Go for it. 
I don't know. Write what you know. That's what they say. Write what you know. Any more questions? Lori Lynn Taylor, would you ever rent out a room for a screenwriter looking to put looking to put it in the work in LA? Oh, you want you want me to like, will I become a landlord? <laughs> no. Ew, no. No, I have I have a family. I have children here. They're not usually here, but sometimes they're here. Sometimes I can't I can't uh, I told my other I told one of my daughters I rented out a room. I didn't though. I told her I did though. Uh do you think Save the Cat is a good book for writers just starting out? Don't know. Never read it. I have a screenwriting course. Was you, I think you know that. So I, I, don't, I don't read that. I, I don't read other books. Everything I learned is from on the job, which is, I think, what makes my course stand out. Is like, I, I'm not a guy. I didn't go to film school. I didn't read books. I learned this from better writers than me. <laughs> I learned by working under really, really talented writers for 26 years. Do you know any advertising copywriters that transitioned to screenwriting? Yeah, I think I do. I think I do. Any other books you recommend? No, I don't. I don't. Other, you know, I just have a course. I don't recommend anybody's books because I haven't read anybody's books, and I won't because, like, I don't want to. I don't want to accidentally steal their ideas. You know. You said in an episode that you're not interested in the script in the first four pages. You're done with it. Besides a big joke, heavy hitting, what's some something else that hooks you to keep reading? Well, manic laba. What I teach in my course is is the story has to start. And if you don't know what that means, I have three videos that are free. Go grab them. They explain what that means. The story has to start by, you know, page four at the latest, uh, you know, four or five. And to get that, um, those free video, go to michaeljammon.com slash free. The link is also in my profile, so you can't miss it. And that will help you, okay? And you don't have to pay for it, it's free. Uh, do, 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 do. Any more questions? I think the advice you give on job seeking is great wisdom for all professions. Such sound, well thought out advice. Yeah, I mean, thank you. I appreciate that. I think a lot of what I said could be applied to other industries just because it's kind of common sense. That's it. Hollywood is not that different from other industries. People think it is because it's Hollywood. I mean, the, the difference is the difference is this. Um, in Hollywood, people will give their mother's left arm to get a job. They'll, they'll work for free. Right. People will do anything. They'll work for free. So you're competing against people who will do anything. And so to make up for the difference, your work has to be excellent. And I'm telling you, I know every I got 54 people listening to this and all 54 think that you are the exception to the rule. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I read a lot of scripts from new writers and I'm talking about writers who've already cleared the first hurdle of getting representation. So they have agents or managers and that's how their scripts wind up, you know, on my table when I'm hiring. These are young writers. They've already cleared the first hurdle of getting representation. And I'm telling you, 99 out of 100 of these scripts suck. They're not ready. They're not ready to be, they're not ready to receive money from me. Not me, but from the studios. But I'm the, I'm the one hiring them. And so, and you think, well, that's cruel, right? Well, but one is, one is, and that's the person who will get hired. I mean, shouldn't be, but should it be any other way? And so most people just want to skip that step. Well, I don't know how to write. Well, it's good enough. Well, no, it's not good enough. It's never good enough. Respect. We'll be signing up this evening. All right, a solid creative. David Crossman, I read Save the Cat. Save your time and take Michael's course. Yeah, Dave Crossman's a, thank you, man. He's a, one of my active students. And we have a, um, a private Facebook group and he's very active in the group. He's, he's leading um, table reads, like where you read, you know, swap scripts, give notes. That's what the, because the, we have a private Facebook group and I'm not in charge of that group. This is, I just get, you know, I give you admission and occasionally I post a, a gem, you know, but for the most part, it's a very, uh, the, the people in the group are very serious about it. There are prize, there are Facebook groups on, you know, there are Facebook groups on Facebook. No kidding. Uh, there are gr screenwriting groups on Facebook, you know, with like 50,000 people and anyone and their brother can join. But the problem is you got a lot of trolls. You got a lot of nastiness in these groups. Uh, but that's none of that's going on in my, my group, at least, at least not yet. Right. Crossman. Uh, let's see. Jammin, you're a do pal. What does that mean? What's your process around writer's block? Well, Dre, uh, so there's no hack. I, 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 I literally do the same things that I teach in my course. There's no hack to it. It's like, I approach story the way I teach it. It's just like, there's the, so there's no, I don't have, I can't have writer's block, Dre. I get paid every week to come up with an idea. I can't tell the studio I don't have anything today. 
they won't pay me anymore. You know, I, so I just use the same tools that I teach that I've that have been taught to me. Hello, what is the best way to get a job as a script reader? Sounds like a terrible job. I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't. I, I don't know. It's a, you know, it's a racket, Catherine. The whole thing's a racket. If you have a pulse, you can get a job as a script reader. You know that, right? Oh, he's not dead. He's hired. And then that person, you'll some some poor schlub off the street is going to pay these script readers to give them notes. And these people have are just like you, you know, or or have no idea how to do it. And they're giving, and you're paying them for notes. Now there are reputable places. If you like. I, I don't believe in services. There are people, though. I know there are professionals who, as a side hustle, they'll read scripts. These are people in the business, workers, uh, writers who just are taking a break. Maybe they're retired. Maybe they're in a dry spell, whatever, and they have time to pick up extra cash. Those are the people you should hire, but never a service. Nuh-uh. Unless you can find out who the person is reading you and then say, okay, give me the link to your IMDb page. The, the, uh, click. Hello? H- hello? Is anybody there? That's what you'll get. I love the Jim Serpico. Oh, good, Bambi. How funny. (laughs) Hold on. I'm going to take a screenshot of that. I cut out. I'm glad you said that because Serpico just, he he just texted me. He goes, any feedback on my, (laughs) any feedback on my podcast episode? I go, nothing yet. And well, I'll I'll just, I'll send him what you, your note. Uh, Have you ever thought of craving a pharmacist as a main character? I don't think so. Have you ever rewritten someone else's script at the last minute? Yes. That's part of the job. Let's see. Uh, hi, Hey, Michael, for story structure, do you have any tips on how to learn the correct steps? Well, Garrett C12, yeah, that's my course. I have a screenwriting course. Uh, you can learn more about that at michaeljammon.com slash course. Any idea what PA start out? Seriously consider dropping my career and moving back to California to do it. Start out, I mean, starting starting salary? No, I really don't. I don't. I'm sorry. I could tell you what I made, but that was a long time ago. That doesn't help. It, it's not a lot. I can tell you that you're gonna you're gonna need a roommate or save some money. Uh, okay, let's let's give a plug. If you're in the Boston area or the Los Angeles area, Boston's coming up. My Boston show is November 12th and 13th. For tickets, go to michaeljammon.com/live. You're gonna laugh. Many of you will cry. There's a lot of sobbers at the end. A lot of people sobbing at the end of my shows, which is great because I know I can. Ma- I've made a uh, living making people laugh, but I wanted to see what well, can I can I make people cry? Can I touch them so much that they brings them to tears? And uh, the last shows I did in L.A. I did six shows, uh, and that's what I was able to do, which is interesting for me because I'm not a, I'm not a drama writer. I'm a comedy guy. So uh, if you like this kind of stuff, if you like comedy and drama mixed together, that's you'll come see my show. That's kind of the recipe. The recipes, I get you to laugh. The guard, your guard comes down. Oh, this is a fun show. Isn't this nice, dear? Yes, it's very nice, dear. I'm having a nice time. And then as soon as that guard comes down, I punch you real hard. This, I stop the jokes and I hit you something really hard. Uh, and that's kind of how I do that. And if you want to see how I do it, you're invited to my show, michaeljammon.com slash live for tickets. Two shows in Amesbury, Massachusetts, November 12th and 13th, and two in LA, December 10th and 11th. Really enjoy your streams. Thank you, Beru. Berube films, Berube films. Sorry, accidentally put my tw- question on twice. That's okay. Like 150 day, last I checked. No, 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 no. They don't, no, 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 no. I think they get more than that. Well, let's see. How much would that be? I don't know. Don't make me do math. I think it's more than that. That sounds below minimum wage. It, but what do I know? I don't know. If I've been a producer for an internet media company for eight years. What do you mean if? Have you or not? What do you mean if? Have you or not? Do you think I can translate that into a te- production for television? Or do I have to start on the ground floor as a PA? Uh, I don't know, dude. I really I really have no idea, Jake. I mean, I don't know. You're not, you're not asking me. You got to ask the right person. You got to ask the person in charge of hiring. If you have some, a skill set that is applicable, I don't know. Maybe you could be co- I don't know what kind of producer. You know, I don't know what you actually do with your internet media company. Let's not say no. Let's not say no. Let's say let's find out. What genre has the highest demand right now? Have no idea, nor do I care. Oh, Lori Lynn. Good. I'm going to take a screenshot of this. Hold on. I'll send you both those. I second the Serpico note. I joined his Spotify and Instagram mind blown podcast. I'll let him know that. Serpico's a good dude. Uh, he'll be happy to hear all this. Do you still apply story structure to your show? Mr. Nathan15. 
Uh, interesting question. So smart question. So um, it depends on the story. Some stories are meditations, not the one, but the ones I, in my book, but the ones I'm performing, yeah, but the ones I'm performing have act breaks built in. I don't break them on the board the way, you know, I would on a TV show. And I'm not such a slave to structure as I do on TV. Um, you know, I'm not. But uh, for sure, I've, as a matter of fact, in some of the early drafts of my book, and my book will be coming out within a year, and I'm going to make all of you buy my book. This is what it's all about, guys. It's about getting, it's about selling my book. Uh, and then, so there were a couple of stories early on where, well, maybe halfway through the book, I was like, let's try experimenting. Let's do something a little different. And I'm talking to myself. Who are you talking to? Me. I'm talking, let's, and I'm like, okay, yeah, let's do that. So I was trying to experiment. I go out, let's not follow the rules here. Let's break the rules. And then I wrote, okay, okay. And then I set it aside when I was done. I set it aside for a couple of weeks. And then I read it with fresh eyes a couple of weeks later. I always encourage you, you have to read with fresh eyes. And I have a terrible memory. So for me, reading with fresh eyes is like, this. it's brand new to me, you know? And I'm like, this sucks. This is terrible. I hated it. I was bored by my own words. And so... I said, you know what? Let's stop playing games. Throw that out. Go back to, literally, go back to what I teach in my course. Uh, and that's what I do. And that's what I did. So the ones, I wrote a bunch of stories. There are several stories that did not make the book because they just weren't up to my standards. So, but yeah, I do apply it. We have two and a half movies written, working on a second draft of a second one. And we found an up and coming studio that we want to pitch it to. Any advice on personalizing the pitch deck? No, I have no advice to pers- ask them what they want. Ask them what they want. That's Don't ask my advice. Ask their advice. Applicable skill set. Thank you. Uh, LA, Boston. Yes. Do you need cameras to shoot a movie? Uh, okay. Hold on a second. Uh, I just have to... Uh, I got to just... Um, I just got to block... I had to block a troll... I have to block a troll. They think they're funny. Sometimes these guys think they're going to impress me. Impress the comedy writer with my knock-knock jokes. How much of it? How much of it is writing for yourself or writing what the studio wants? This is for a network show. What do you mean? How much of it is writing for yourself or writing for? When I sell a show, it's what they want, and at every step of the way, you know, they give notes, and I'm like, sure, absolutely, yes, sir, yes, ma'am. Why not? It's their, it's their money. Their money, they're paying me for it. The last thing I want to do is piss them off before they put the show on the air. This is my living. I got to, I got to make money. Get the book, see the one man show, take the course, watch the shows. Ezra, 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 and tell a friend. Thank you, Ezra. My Nassau sweatshirt. Yes, it is. This sucks. This is terrible. Well, I'm not for everybody. My screenplay, Tears of Blood, placed in five contests. What is the best thing to do? Query letters. I don't know what contest you're placing in. Have I heard of any of these? I don't know. My great uncle was f- was the first black dean at Princeton. Is that right? Wow. Excellent. Breaking down walls there. I loved uh, hearing you talk of your meditative process after a run while touching the oak tree. Very little. Oh, yeah, that's my tree. Uh, let's see. Some more questions. What's the best script I ever read? I have to think about it. Never thought of asking them. <laughs> That's right, Paul. Just ask. I do it all the time. If someone says, hey, can you give me a treatment? I go, sure. Send me a treatment that you liked. Right? Just give me one that you like, and then uh, I'll model it. I'll make it look like theirs. And I've been doing this a long time. Well, I, give them what they want. Who cares what I want? I'm trying to make the money. I'm trying to get the cheddar out of their hands. Uh, let's see. What shows do you like to work on? Uh, whoever's paying me. Whoever's paying me. That's I don't really... Whoever's paying me. Let's go over here. Uh, ha, 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 ha. Let's see. Nope. Uh, Screencraft, Final Draft, Boston Screenplay Contest. I never heard. I know I heard a Final Draft. Never heard a screen. I don't. I don't know what Screencraft. I don't know if that's big or not. I don't know what the Boston Screenplay Contest is. But placing, 
I, 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 you know, did you win? Win a big one. If you win a small, like, you know, you understand all of, most of these competitions are just money making machines for the people who run the comp desk. It's, the, it's the how they make money. You don't make money. They make money. So you're not going to impress anybody by, by saying I won some, you know, or I placed in some like two bit contest. How's the script? Is the script any good? I wouldn't, I, I, I swear to God, I don't care if you placed in a contest at all. I don't care. Did, is the script any good? That's all I care about when I'm reading it. You know, I don't know. I, I don't know. If you want, if you win a contest, or if it makes you feel good, if it boosts your ego, it feels like if it make if it makes you feel like you're making progress in your career. And I'm not being facetious. If it helps you mentally, then do it. Right? It's it's a small price to pay for a little bit of feedback and satisfaction and pride. It's a small price to pay, but is it going to advance your career? Probably not. But that's okay. There's a, there's benefit from it. Is the crime rate of LA magnified on the news, or should I actually take that into account when moving here? Uh, well, you want to live in a decent neighborhood. I've lived here for twenty six, seven, eight now. No, thir- oh no, thirty years. Nothing's ever happened to me. I live in a nice neighborhood, and someone stole the hubcaps off my Jeep. What are you going to do? It is what it is. Um. Does writing, I mean, tell, tell me what city doesn't have crime, though. You know, really. Does writing, I mean, does writing in multiple, and, and are you going to let that stop you? Are you? I mean, really? There's probably no crime in, like, these small towns. So move to a small town. They got crime, though. They got meth. Have you ever worked on movies? Yes, I've sold two movies. Do I want to do it again? No. Does writing in multiple genres make you more marketable less? Less. Why, Josh, J- Josh Roeder? Why? Put yourself in a box. You want to be a specialist. If I have a TV show and I'm a hire in comedy writers, do I give a crap if you can write mystery? No. Do I give a crap if you can write drama? No. What about musicals? No. I want to hire a comedy writer. You, you, this is something you're putting on yourself. It's like, I, I'll do anything. That's bullshit. I'll do anything. Well, we, I don't want someone who could do anything. I want a specialist. What do you want to do? What do you want to write? What is What writing do you do is so freaking amazing that you are undeniably great? Because mediocre at all at five different genres doesn't help anybody. Be excellent at one damn thing. Put yourself in a box. I hear people and actors too. I don't want to put myself in a box. I don't want to label myself. Really? Why not? When I go to the supermarket, I know exactly what's in every freaking box of cereal. So I don't have any surprises. That's the one I want. Put yourself in a box. Then after 5, 10, 15 years of doing the same thing, then we can worry about getting you out of the box. But until then, put yourself in a damn box. What are you worried about? That's how people know what you are. I'm a comedy writer. I've made a living doing nothing but comedy for 26 years. That's how I make a living. Have you worked on movies? Yeah, I did. We did that. Clearly, I've run out of writing questions for the moment. Yep. Have you worked on commercials? I've written some commercials for my wife's company, but and I've written some for small companies, but I'm not a commercial writer, you know? Have you tried doing stand-up? I did stand-up when I was in college and shortly afterwards, and then I just wanted to be a comedy writer. How common is it for WGA jobs to pay above scale? Okay, well... Writer's Guild minimum is scale, you understand? So the very first job you get, you will be making scale, okay? That's it. Everybody above, on year two, everyone's making more than scale. Year one, you're making scale. So, I mean, I haven't made Writer's Guild scale in 26 years, so. Uh, would you ever do a guest appearance on a, would you ever, would you ever do a guest appearance in a mini show? Like Al Franken, I don't know what that means, in a mini show? Two bit damn, that's a low blow. I don't know what that means. It's easier to get a live action or animated series picked up. At the beginning of the pandemic, it was easier to do to get an animated show. So my partner and I sold an animated show to the E network at the beginning of the pandemic because they're easier to produce or safer to produce. But now it's the same. It's about the same. So you once said you have you once said to have the people you trust read your scripts. Like friends and family. Good, you're listening to me. Do you still run your own personal projects by friends and family or have a professional writer look it over? Okay, so uh, when I'm doing a script with my writing partner, when we're turning in a draft or something, no, me and him, we're a team. We're both professionals, so we both look at it. You know, we're the people. 
But for my for this, my personal writing, there's only one person that reads it in advance, and that's my wife, and I trust her. Uh, I like the way, you, and, I, and you know, I didn't know to trust her. She was an actor for many years, so she approaches it from an acting point of view. She's also directing my show, by the way. But um, I trust her, and that's not because I've married her. It's because when I hear what she has to say, I go, that makes sense. I get it. It makes sense to me. So she's the only one who gives me notes on, on my book. Uh, do you think there is more need now? And so, and by the way, if you're in the Boston area or LA area, come see my show. Get your tickets while you can. Woohoo! Each show is followed by a Q&A and it asks the question, what if the smallest, almost forgotten moments were the ones that shaped us most? Most, so many people, especially writers think, this is why it's good for writers. So many people think, um, you know, they got to write about big things, you know, falling out of an airplane, getting in, fighting your way out of a war. Uh, you know, getting to an accident and having your legs cut off and then survive, like whatever, big, big things. But as I talk about in the show, this show is all about the smallest moments. These are small stories or character pieces. And you all have these things that you do. You just don't, you're just not aware of it. And so if you see my show, you'll go, oh, I got stories like that. Now I see how this guy does it. Uh, you all have stories and that's what you should be writing about. It's what you should be putting in your work. Why? Because you're the only one who can write it. You're the only person on the planet. So instead of writing this garbage, this garbage crap, which so many people are writing, like these generic scripts about generic people that you make up, why not write something about yourself because you know who you are better than anyone else. And, and if you know, and if you can learn how to tap into that, then you can you you have the potential to write gold instead of garbage instead of you know what you know what I see all the time from young writers adorkable look at my look here's a script of my star she isn't she adorkable no she's not adorkable actually she's someone I don't want to spend two minutes with when you write about yourself and if you're honest and this is what I do in my show I'm not a superhero I'm not a person of note I don't have any superpowers. I'm not a, I didn't, you know, I, I wasn't a Green Beret. Uh, but I tell these small stories that all of you can relate to, but I tell them through my lens. And my lens, of course, is unique to me. And you go, oh, that's interesting, you know? But you can do it too. You just have to learn it and learn how to. So if you want to come see my show, the Boston or LA show, tickets are available, michaeljammon.com slash live. I know it'll inspire you. Uh, I had a woman, she's actually in my course, and she came to the show. She, she actually came to three shows because I did different stories each time. And she came back. She she did a, a drive. She drove two hours each way to see the show. And she kept on coming back. And then she left a review, you know, because I asked people, hey, leave, go on social media. You, tell me what you thought of the show. And she went hoping, she went hoping to learn more about writing. And instead, she goes, I got so suck, caught up in the stories, I forgot all about it. But then she came back. To pay, to pay attention. So that's good writing is when, that's my goal when I write is, you know, you, you the reader should, or the viewer or the audience lose track of time. And what I want, my goal is, this is what I aim for. And I don't, you know, whether I achieve it or not is for you to decide. But I want you to see that show and then walk out of the theater and then sit in your car for five minutes before turning it on. That's my goal. That's what I think about when I write. How can I get people to sit in their car for, for a couple minutes before they turn on the ignition and drive off? Because I want it to have that kind of power on you, you know? To me, that's the mark of really great writing is not, are you enjoying it in the moment? Because I've seen plenty of shows where like, hey, this is good, right? But then the minute you leave the theater or, you know, turn off the show or whatever, you've forgotten all about it. So to me, the mark of excellent writing, and you've all seen movies and plays and shows like this where it sticks with you a couple of days later you're still thinking about it you're still and so and i've had people tell me that from this show and god bless that's what i'm going for you know and that's why i did it that's because i want to see can i do it so anyway if you want to come see i hope you come see my show for tickets go to michaeljammon.com slash life let's talk as just some more questions do you think there's a more need nowadays for stories from the middle east regarding to what Hollywood is moving to, and which best streaming service should I pitch a story to? Uh, well, I don't know, not so much the Middle East, but there are, is a sincere push in Hollywood right now to get more diverse stories, 
from underrepresented groups. So that could be, you know, people of all backgrounds. Middle East would be one of them. I don't have a specific streaming service, which one they're, they're all looking for. It. So the question is, do you know how to write? They're not just going to, they're not just handing out money to people who, you know, of diverse backgrounds. You still have to have the talent to back it up, but they are looking for those people. What age are most writers you work with, young or older? I'm planning to start writing more and I'm in my 40s. Well, Danielle, this is what I don't like about your question. I'm planning to start writing more. I'm planning. But, but, there should be no planning. When, I, when you're done with this live, put down the phone and write tonight. There's no, you don't need to plan to write more. You don't need an invitation to write more. I'm serious. My daughter, who's an excellent writer, and she's in college, whenever she shares work with me, I'm like, damn, this is good. I, 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 don't, I don't, I'm like, I don't want to tell her this, but she's better than me. <laughs> or, she's, or she will be. She's really, really good. And I'm like, so tell me what, how your writing going, because she's just in school. She goes, I write all the time. She goes, Papa, I write all the time. I go, really? How do you? She goes, on my phone. I go, but it's so small, those keyboards. But you don't understand, these kids... She, with her fingers on this phone, did, 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 like she's really fast on this damn phone. And so she'll write, if she's standing on line, she's waiting, she's writing all the time. She's good. She's good. Don't tell her I said so. Uh, let's see. Did you make a, your mug in a creative pottery class? I, I got this mug from Pottery Barn. City data stats are compared to Toledo, Ohio. Okay, there you go. Lovely Anne, she had teeth. All right, see, teeth is, a, it's good to have teeth. I already have a drama, a comedy, a fantasy, and a dramatic story stage play. All right. I like to write, but I'm not great. I'm good at organizing a set. Yeah, but you'll keep writing. You'll, that's how you get better. Keep doing it. Can you work on multiple shows at once? No, it's a full-time job. Full-time job. Cannot do that. Checking sources, okay. Uh, LA, yeah. Does Goofy know? Of my, um, Goofy will find out. Why do you write? CEO, uh, well, I write, it's my living. That's how I make a living. But if you, but, but, you know, this is not how I make a living. This is how, this is what I wanted to express deep inside me. This is, you know, this is my, this is my hobby. My, my writing is whatever TV show I'm working on. But uh, this I write because I don't have anybody, you know, I enjoy writing. But you, this is what you understand. And I talk about this in my show a little bit. I'm a professional TV writer. I don't write what I want to write. I write what people pay me to write. And that's how it's been for 26 years. Or I write what I think I can sell. That's how it's been for... So I've in 26 years, I've, I had never written something that I wanted to write. And so I was like, you know what? This is a couple years ago when I started this project. What would it be like if I wrote just for myself without getting network notes, without trying to sell it, without having to have someone look over my shoulder, because I'm gonna be honest with you. Am I anything but honest with you? As a TV writer, I kind of think of myself as a racehorse with a jockey on my back, slapping me, and I'm running around in circles, counterclockwise, right? Don't they go counterclockwise? Just going in circles, in circles, and someone's hitting me in the back, faster, faster, faster. All right, that's, that's fine. It's not, nothing wrong with being a racehorse. But when I was doing this on my own, it was like, well, what can I, how would I write if someone wasn't hitting me on the back and if I didn't have to go in a circle and if I can, and if there wasn't weighing me down, if I didn't have weight on my shoulder, if someone telling me what to do. And at first it was a little scary. I was like, am I going the right way? And then after a couple stories, I started flying with it, flying. And it felt so good. It felt so liberating. It was like, wow, look what I can do without someone yelling at me. <laughs> uh, so yeah, and that's why I feel like this is my best work. Even though I'm not getting paid for this, it's my best work. So if you want to come see me, michaeljammon.com slash live for tickets. Let's answer a couple more questions. That's why I write though, CEO Danny B. I'm an editor and I and always wondered why you hear of writer, producer, writer, director, but not writer, editor. Oh, good question, Justin. Well, uh, an editor is a full-time position on, on a show. So these are people, they do nothing but edit. And they are stuck in that bay, that dark editing bay, like veal, you know, long hours. But a writer-producer, 
you know, that's, that, that's the same thing. It's just a different, we all, I do that at the same time. That's that, that, person, that responsibility I do at the same time. So when I'm a writer, I'm in the same writer's room as, I'm a writer producer. It's one job basically, as opposed to, I'm not a writer script coordinator. I'm not a writer key grip. That's kind of what you'd be saying. You know, those are very different jobs. How the hell can I get bigger auditions? I never, I don't know. Uh, I don't know. I'm not, an, I'm not, I don't really give too much acting advice about that. I just learned that scale is the lowest paid for the union, but you could ask for more. Yes. Yes. Scale is, is the lowest paid. You could always ask for more. You're not going to get it. You're not going to get it. You don't have, uh, you're not going to, you don't have any leverage. So you're not going to get more and you don't deserve more. Your only leverage is to walk away. But just to be clear, Writers Guild minimum, Writers Guild scale, it's a lot of money. It's a lot of money. It's something like, it's something like, depending on the show, depending on where it is, network, cable, blah, 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 easily 5,000, 5,500 a week. That's a lot of money. So when someone offers you Writers Guild scale, you're not going to walk away from that. You're going to say, thank you. Writers Guild Minute, Writers Guild of America. It's a good union. Uh, favorite scene? I don't know. Uh, I'm two episodes into my comedy script. Should I keep writing? Or focus on rewrites. Focus on rewrites. So you don't write two episodes. You write one. You just need one. You need Hunter, one script. You need one sample. It has to be great. Two poor ones don't help. Uh, sorry about the confusing question. I meant to type, would you ever want to do a guest appearance in one of your shows like Al Franken? Oh, I've done guest appearances on some of my shows. Yeah. Lancey Steve. Hey, Michael. Just FYI, I spoke with my sister and brother-in-law yesterday, and they're in for a paper orchestra in December. See you then. Also, my sis is a Friends fan and may recognize Cynthia. All right. So Steve is coming to my show in December, and he's bringing some family. And yeah, you'll probably recognize Cynthia. Come to the West Village. Real Mike. Real, I'd love to. I, I will probably do a show. Someone asked me just a couple hours ago if I'm going to do a show in New York. So Real Mike, either DM me your email address and say New York City or... Go to michaeljammon.com slash upcoming and, and put your email address there. But I need to have the email address because I don't travel. You understand? A lot of people say, come to my town. We all will see your show. And I'm like, okay, well, what's your email address? And they go, oh, I'm not giving you that. Well, I understand not wanting to give your email address because, you know, you, know, you don't want to get spammed and stuff. But if you're not going to give me your email address, you ain't giving me your Benjamins. We know that. We know that. How do you approach bottle episodes? Is it the same? Uh, you know what? It, it's a story, 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 story. You know, if you watch an old episode of Cheers or an old, old episode of uh, All in the Family, they were almost all bottle episodes and they were great shows. They were like stage plays. Can I write a stage play? Of course I can. So I can write a bottle episode. Uh, <clears throat> is gaining representation for the first step? No, it's not. Uh, Daydream Studios, go watch my YouTube video. If if, you're, if all of you aren't subscribed to my YouTube channel, it's at Michael Jammon Writer. And I have a 45 minute video there about gaining, getting agents and managers. And so watch that video. It's a long video. And every time I tell people this, I see the stats, no one ever watches it, which is fascinating to me. Fascinating, because everyone asks me that question. How do I get an agent? How do I get a manager? I go, well, here's how you do it. Mm, I don't want to watch it. I don't want to get a manager that bad. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> it's shocking to me. You know, and I don't, I, I give it away, but people don't want it. So don't, I don't, don't get it. It doesn't, I already got an agent and a manager. I love this man. Take his course. You'll be a better writer. Comedy Mustafa. Yeah. I remember when he bought that, my course, <laughs> he goes, I, I remember that. So I really appreciate that. He was like, I'm not sure. I'm thinking of getting your course, but I'm not sure. I'm like, all right, well, when you're ready, you'll get it. And then like a day later, he goes, I got your course and I'm burning through it. And it's the best thing I ever did. <laughs> and so, yeah, I mean, I, you know, I ain't messing around with that course. It'll help. MichaelJammon.com slash course if you want it. Michael, my definition of story, a series of events a character goes through that leaves them irre irreversibly changed somehow, better, worse, happier, sadder, alive, dead. Am I warm? Uh, not really. I mean, you're, you're not far, but that's not, that's not the, if you want to know, I have, go watch my free video on what, how I define story and that you can get that at michaeljammon.com slash free. You're not far, but it's, but this is not, it's not a, a complete because first of all, if you ever watch a sitcom, 
characters at the end of every episode, you might they are they are definitely reversed. They are not irreversibly changed at the end. They are reversibly changed because at the at the end of the episode, in the next episode, they, whatever lesson they seem to have learned, they have forgotten. So the idea of rever- irre- you don't have to be reversibly irreversibly changed, and all you have to be, in my opinion, is just a little different than you were before you started on your journey. Because a story is a journey. You have to be different. So you could be better for it. You could be worse for it. But different. It doesn't have to be irreversible. It doesn't have to be that big. It really doesn't. You know, irreversibly makes it sound like someone's legs got cut off or something. But but you're close. But I mean, so, you know, you're not terrible here. But I think there's an easier way to think about it. That's all. So you're warm, but not hot. But you're warm. What else did you say here? Uh, go to that better, worse, happier. So yeah, but also it's like happier or sadder. It's like because you say, like if I st- go outside and I'm, I got my new shoes and I step in dog shit, I guarantee you I'll be sadder. But is that a story? No, it's not a story. So I'm definitely sadder, right? So it's not a great definition. There's a, there's some overlap, but it's not perfect. But I like the swing you took. If not contest for screenplays, how can you break in as an unknown writer? Jim, I have tons of tips. Jim Barrett from 503. Tons of tips on, on what I would do. And I offer them all on my free newsletter. Go sign up for that. MichaelJammon.com slash watch list. The link is in my profile. It goes out every Friday. You just missed it because today is Friday, but you'll get one next week. I have tons. God damn it. I'm convinced to buy a ticket. Hector, MJ, I'll see you at my show. Hector's convinced. Hector's like, I don't know, man. This ticket, man. This, this ticket. I don't know. But, he, but we talked him into it. He's going to come see my show. You'll enjoy it, Hector. I guarantee you. No one's walked out of my shows yet. And, uh, you know, and people come back from more. Like Lancey Steve, he's bringing his family. He's like, the first time he came, he's like, I don't know if I want to bring my family. But he's, now he's bringing his sister. He hasn't talked to his sister in years. This is going to, he's going to make, they're going to make up. Do you change your approach to writing specific characters the more you get to know the actors playing for them? Absolutely. Yeah, totally. On every show I've ever been on, you get to know the actors. Then you hang out with them at lunch. They confide in you. They tell you a story. And the next thing you know, you, they, you put it in a script. And they're like, hey, you're not supposed to put this in a script. And you're like, sorry, sorry. Shouldn't have trusted me. Absolutely. Always write towards the actor's strengths. I'm from Canada. I'm writing for a Canadian. Am I saying it right? Television. I'm wondering if you have any input on the state of Canadian media. Uh, I don't have any input. I did a show that was a Canadian co-production uh, years ago. Um, we shot it in Toronto. It's actually pronounced Toronto, just so you know. I'm telling you how it's pronounced. Uh, but I don't know much more about, you know, Canada, their co- their production I'm done with my script completely. Now comes the hard part, getting rejected left and right and center and ultimately doing something else. Reddit has been hammering me down to reality for being a rookie. Reddit is mean, Ali. Just, you know that, right? Reddit is the meanest place you can go on the internet. So don't, don't, oh, my phone's gonna die soon. So don't beat yourself up. But um, Reddit's mean. Would you ever consider teaching one free class on Instagram Live? All day, Eric. Uh, yes, as a matter of fact, we are thinking about doing something like that. Um, not on Instagram Live, though. It would be, um, it would be like it'd be a private, you know, probably Zoom or something like that. Because you know, that's not a, you know, you got to register for it, but it's free. I don't know when it'll be though. Probably January because I'm a little busy now. Um, but if you want to be notified for that, what is your name again? All day, Eric. Um, just get on my newsletter and, and you'll be notified. MichaelJammon.com slash watch list. And we'll, we'll let you know when that happens. Michael, big fan. Thank you for all you do. Thank you, Reggie. Reggie Sears. Do you think there are any Hollywood biases, politically, spiritually, or philosophically that dictate what content companies choose to air, regardless of the quality of art? Okay. So everyone thinks this smooth. Everyone thinks that, you know, Hollywood has an agenda and, if there is an agenda, I haven't gotten the notice. It, like it, you'd think that the studios would send me like some kind of, you know, letter telling me we're only talking about these policies, right? Uh, I got to be honest with you. Hollywood is a ruthless place, but what do they care about? 
money, money, honey. They're not here to proselytize. They're here to make money. That's all they want. Okay. Now, when I write a show, so like, why they're not going to want to alienate anybody. They just want money. When I write a show, and let's say I have a character who calls himself they, them, as opposed to he or she, right? They're a they, them. Now, you may say I have a liberal agenda. The way I see it is I'm just reflecting. These people are out in the real world. So I'm reflecting. My job is to reflect the people who are out in the real world. And if people call themselves they, them in the real world, then I would be stupid not to put one in my script because do, do I live on Mars? No, I live on planet Earth. This is what's going on here. So does that mean I have um, an agenda or does that mean my eyes are open? I think it means my eyes are open. Hector, I will see you December 10th. I'll see you December 10th, Hector MJ. I like your initials there. Uh, awesome, dude. Bring a friend. If you don't have a friend, make a friend. I've, maybe you'll leave with a friend. Who knows? I don't know what's going on with you. I've heard your first script usually ends up being a writing sample. Absolutely. So I got to keep writing. But man, even if it helps me get staffed somewhere else, it's enough. No, that means you're doing exactly right. It's a writing sample. It's got to be a great writing sample. Are you proud of everything you've written or are there some jobs you wish you hadn't done? No, uh, every job I've taken, I've taken because either I wanted to work on it or I wanted the money. You know, like, who am I kidding? I, I need money. Sometimes you take a job for the money. Where's the shame in that? My kids are, they get fed. Hmm. I see someone, I see someone I know in my feed. And I think you know who I know you are. What do you look for in a writer's assistant before you vouch for them to be bumped up to a writer or not? Oh, okay. Um, when someone's a writer's assistant, they won't get the bump, at least for me. I have to read their work. I, have to, I don't just bump them up. I got to read their work. I know that I, they've been working for me for a couple of years, so I know and I like them and I trust them. And maybe they pitch a little. And I go, that's not bad, rookie. But then at the end of the day, I got to read their, their work. So I look for the script. What's the order? Getting a manager or an agent? Do you need a manager? You don't need a manager. Uh, a manager can often help you get an agent. Uh, but there's no order. It's whatever you want. And Frank, if you want to know more about that, go check out my YouTube. Uh, my YouTube is at Michael Jammin Writer. I have longer content on my YouTube. By the way, when I all these lives that I do, if you want to watch them, I, po I replay them on my YouTube channel. So, so all of you subscribe to my YouTube channel at Michael Jammin Writer because I got different stuff there. That's how I get you to follow me everywhere. Because let's say that's Instagram place. Let's say Mark Zuckerberg. Let's say he finally takes off on his hot air balloon. He goes, frigate, I'm going up Jupiter. And then he, I'm taking Instagram with me. He, he'll do it, believe me. Musk is already thinking about it. He's, but that rocket's for himself. He's going to Mars. He's halfway there. So uh, I have different stuff on different platforms. So if you want to follow me everywhere. Jeffrey, to add on to your comment of putting yourself in a box like comedy writing, is it positive to consider yourself a jack of all trades? Like I love writing, but I also love character design. No, don't, you don't want to be a jack of all trades. I don't want a jack. Jeffrey, I, when, when I'm hiring someone, do I want a jack of all trades or do I want a specialist? What do I want? What does your employer want? Why, if your employer, I'm going to say it one last time and I'm going to yell at you some more. If your employer is, has a show and, it's a, and it is a, a horror show, right? It's something scary, like whatever, all those horror shows, you know. They want someone who writes horror. They don't want someone who's a jack of all trades. They want a specialist. Everyone wants to hire a specialist. So don't be a jack of all trades. All right, coming to New York, Julia wants me to come. I know, I know, I'm trying, but not, not anytime soon, Julia. Thanks for your help. You're welcome, Hunter. Coming to Georgia soon. Uh, TK Bella, I'd love to. Atlanta, I'd love to. If you want to DM me your email address or go to michaeljammin.com slash upcoming and enter your information there. Because like I said before, I won't travel until I have a sizable list. Because if I have like 100 names on a tick uh, for email and say, hey, 100 people say, I want to see your show. We know 100 people aren't buying tickets. We know maybe half will buy. Maybe. So I can't, you know, I need a, I need a list. Is writing TV, a, and I'd love to see you there. I'd love to come to Georgia, believe me. But I just need a list. Is, is have all your friends. You got a lot of friends. You seem popular. Have your friends come. Or email me. Is reality TV a union busting tactic to, st to stiff writers? No, not really. I mean, it's just its own thing. I don't think it's a tactic. 
you know. What are you drinking? Sleepy time tea? I'm almost out though, sleepy time. Other Toronto folks, please DM me your DM me your email address. Let's crowdfund his visit. Yeah, crowdfund my visit. Like I may be doing, we're going to try to do a show, well, I got Boston next weekend and then LA in December. And then we're going to try to do one in Houston. We got some interest in Houston. So, you know, uh, any war stories from the writer strikes? Uh, they're no fun. Writer strikes are no fun. I'll watch that story video, Michael. Thanks. Yeah, Steve, you're close. You're close, but watch it. It's free and that'll help. Michael, true that sitcom characters don't really change. They don't really change. I mean, if they change, then there goes the show, right? You know, if Steve Carell at the end of The Office grows and evolves too much, then he's not funny anymore. He has to be a boob, a babble. He has to be a, a, a insecure, joke-hungry idiot at the, end, at the beginning of the next episode or else it won't be funny. So they can grow, but this, they usually grow this much at the end. And then, and then at the beginning, they come, they're this much. Like they, we, uh, they take two, one step forward and at the end, they take two steps back. You know, you have to. Thoughts on Dan Harmon's story circle? I don't have any thoughts on that because I have my own teaching method. So I don't even think about what he does. His one man show, love the end. His one man show shows you his writing style other than TV. I hope to take his course, but new bills keep coming in. But I started a penny jar. <laughs> Gotta have a penny jar. Yeah, uh, yeah, I, I, yeah. That's basically my show. You know, thank you. You're welcome, Jim. Uh, okay, like our journalism teacher that got a private email from the head of the school on why she's leaving and had a student put up an article. Yeah, what? How do you feel about the stage thirty-two for writers? I don't have any opinions on that. Sorry. Uh, just FYI, the sitcom considered all time worst is a cheap Canadian show called The Trouble with Tracy. I never heard of that. Never heard of that one. Is there a story you've wanted to write but don't think it would sell? Uh, n- not really because it, I just move on. If I don't think I'm going to sell it, I just move on, you know? I, I don't give it much more thought. I go, eh, this wouldn't sell. Screw it. Come up with something else. I was wondering, there are some shows that have entire episodes full of one-man monologues. How do you approach structure to something like this? Sorry if it's a dumb question. No, it's not a dumb question, but I don't really know what shows you're referring to. One-man monologues. I don't really I don't really know. Come to Philly or NYC. Riggle, I got a lot of people who want me to go to both those cities. So DM me your email address and say, what city? My guess is you live in New Jersey because you're halfway between New York. And, uh, and I went to school, as you can see, in New Jersey. So I know something about it. So I'm guessing you live in New Jersey and you're saying uh, come to either one of those places. But I still, again, I won't go until I have an email address or a lot of email addresses. You see what I'm saying? I can't, I, you know, I got I to gotta sell the theater. I got to sell the theater. My house flooded in Florida and now I live in the Appalachian Mountains. Do you think I have a story? Sure you do. But you would have had a story if your house hadn't flooded. You know what I'm saying? Advice from career change from stable job to a writer? I don't know what you're asking. Some sitcoms seem to get more political over time. Maybe, I don't, I don't know. Uh, you know, Murphy Brown. Here's some questions here. Not a question, but wanted to plug your screenwriting course. Thank you, Comedy Mustafa. It's worth the investment. I'm in pre-production on my original pilot, and it's all thanks to you. You've guided me into being a professional writer. Thank you so much. This guy, watch out for Comedy Mustafa because that's how, he's, that's how you do it. Hey, Michael, for story structure, do you have tips on how to learn the correct steps? Yeah, I mean, that's, that's what I teach in my course. Or maybe everyone watch it. Oh, is that how you do this? I tap it. What? I'm just learning how to use this app. Uh, I took Michael Jamin writing course, and it has improved my life. <laughs> yeah, but where was it before you took it? It was in the toilet. Uh, favorite guest star in King of the Hill? Oh, I worked with many great guest stars. Uh, I don't know, favorite. I mean, Tom Petty used to come to the table reads. He was great. Uh, Gwen Stefani came in. I was like, look how cute Gwen Stefani is. Cause she, she was, she was like four feet tall. Uh, and this was, when was this? Probably 1999 or something. Um, who else? Who else? We had a lot of guest stars. Ben Stiller. I wrote for him. Who else? A lot of guest stars. Oh, uh, oh my God. I was on King of the Hill when um, uh, Tone Loke, Tone Loke, you know, the rapper from, you know, 
And uh, he was great. And he came to the table read. He was great. He's playing a part. And he had a seizure. He had a seizure during, during the table read. I guess the script was that bad. Or maybe he wanted out of it. He's like, I, I, I'm faking a seizure. But it was serious. And he had a, a buddy with him who knew just what to do. So, yeah. You know, thank God he was okay. Yeah. But he was cool. Who else was there? We had so many. You know, Brittany Murphy, of course. She was sweet. Uh, but she was a regular. She wasn't a guest star. Um, yeah, I don't know. Every week it was somebody new, somebody great. But also when I did Glenn Martin, we had a lot of great guest stars. Uh, let me see. Is it too late to get into script writing? I don't know how old you are and I don't know how late it is, but... Uh, I'd say it's never too late if you enjoy it. What is your opinion on how editing has changed in the last 20 years? Oh, interesting. Interesting. It's definitely faster. The cuts are faster. Um, I think editing has gotten better. <clears throat> the only thing that's gotten worse is uh, if you watch a show or a movie from, may say, 30 years ago, you'll notice how quiet it is. And now everything's wall-to-wall -wall sound or music. It's like, ugh. So on the shows my partner and I run, we're always pulling music out. I love music and music can be great, but you, I, you don't want to overuse it. I think it dumbs it down. But that's not really editing, but it's close to editing. Okay, here's some more questions. Oh boy. Uh, by the way, if you're just joining, go get your tickets. Somebody, I guess somebody just joined uh, or bought my, my show, Paper Orchestra. It's going to be in Boston this next weekend. Oh, my God. Why am I not rehearsing? Now I'm getting nervous. Uh, <laughs> November 12th and 13th in Amesbury, Massachusetts. Then two shows back in L.A. December 10th and 11th. I'll be okay. All I need is a good vomit and I'll be fine. And a cry. And a good cry. Uh, are there certain obscure careers that transition better to writing than others? No, Mark. No, it's not that. It's I swear to God, it comes down to one thing: your script. Can you write a good script? There's no ease. That that's it. It's the 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 field is level. How have blocking techniques changed? What film shows are you most are most influential in that? I don't know. Camera blocking? Or are you talking about blocking actors? Your podcast episode with Jim Serpico was so good. Ha <laughs> ha! I'm taking a screenshot. If I freeze, hold on. Oops. He'll be happy to hear that. How much of good writing is reading a lot? Yeah, it's important. Yeah. Thanks for doing these. You rule. You're welcome, Riggle. Riggle. I have a similar question. Is it too late? I'm 27. Okay. And I know that's not old, but Hollywood has an ageist reputation in some areas. Does that translate to writing jobs? Okay. Lily, I swear to you, 27 is not old. It's not old. If And you may worry, you worry about ageism, but... 30 is not old. 35 is not old. You're okay. Do you ever do any shows or events in New Mexico? Jesus Lopez. I would love to come. People have, I've been to New Mexico, been to Albuquerque. I know those Sandia Mountains. I'd love to do a show there. But again, I need to have enough names to actually make it happen. So if you want to come see me, either DM me your email address and what city you are, or you can enter it at michaeljammon.com slash upcoming. Thanks for, I hope, and I hope to see you there, Jesus. Uh, I, I did a show, Jesus. I did an episode of Just Shoot Me. We did a Christmas episode. And we had a guy. And, uh, and uh, the joke was he, he was working at the magazine. And he, he had a dream of opening up a smoothie stand. And he was going to call it Jesus' Juices. So the name is out there if you want to do it. It's yours for the taking. Do not believe any girls on social media because some of them may be scammer. Okay. Things got weird. Do you ever ha have a hand in who the post-production is for your shows, particularly sound, sound designer here? No, actually, I don't. Uh, I don't. I, usually someone else hires that. And, you know, sometimes I sign off on it. I go, yeah, you look like you, you could stand up straight or whatever. You know, you're not a drooling idiot, but I don't really, I don't really have a say. I guess I could, but I don't, I don't want to have a say in that. What do you think about writing a feature screenplay just to practice? I love it, Jazz. I love it. That's ex Chaz, smartest thing you ever said. My bad, look, blocking actors, if you remember my question. It, it, blocking actors is, is no different. Blo so for all you 
blocking actors is, um, is uh, you know, an actor you have a scene. And on this line, you get up and you cross to the door. And then when she says her line, you slap him. And then, you know, that's what blocking is. Where, where do I move? Where do I, has it changed? I don't think so. Other than a paper orchestra, what is it you want to be most remembered by? Uh, it, for, uh, you know, it's that. It's my book. It's my book. I don't, uh, uh, it's funny because people say, people <clears throat> want to know, like, what's your favorite joke you wrote? What's your favorite script you wrote? Like, I don't even remember, man, because all that's in the past. Like, I got to, I got to, I sold it. I got to write something new tomorrow. I got to, you know, so I don't dwell on that. I don't like pat my, sometimes like people expect me, they ask me questions about King of the Hill, which I wrote on 20 years ago. So I, you know, and I, I understand people love that show and I, that's great. I'm happy they love it, but I haven't personally watched it in 20 years. So they remember the show better than I do because I'm working on whatever I'm working on now. Um, you know, that's just the, the nature of, you know, making a living. But that's why with this, this is not making a living. This is writing for art. I, it's, I, I, how, can I, how can I create art? And I, I hesitate to use that word. And I didn't even know what art was for many, many years until David Bowie explained it to me in a video. Well, not just me, but everybody. I just happened to watch it. He likes me more than most people. Uh, how do I come up with characters' names? Eh, whatever inspires me, really. Uh, sometimes I use a baby book. Linear or non-linear storytelling. I don't really know what that means, linear storytelling. I'm sorry, I don't know what that means, Vladimir. Any advice for putting on a one-man show? I know that's a broad question. Well, <laughs> I am putting on a one-man show. Uh, so you need to sell tickets, you know. Um, but I'll tell you, oh, my back. I'll tell you this. I feel this very strong obligation to anyone who forks over, like the tickets for the Boston show are 25 each and the, the, the tickets for the LA show are 35. It's a more expensive venue. But um, I feel a very strong, even though it's, is that a lot of money, 35? I don't know. You know, for some people it is. Relatively speaking, it's not. But I feel a strong obligation to anybody who buys a ticket to my show that I better entertain the hell out of them. You know, whether you think it's a lot of money or not, I feel like, well, someone's taking time out of their evening to come see my show, which is hugely flattering to me. It's so special. I'm so touched that someone wants to do this. I better damn well give you a good show. And by that, I want to take you on an emotional roller coaster. When I, when I see, there's nothing like watching bad theater. There's an, there's an old joke, right? Nothing lasts forever except bad theater. I will not have that. And so believe me when I say this, I give you a good show because I take you on a journey, right? An emotional journey where you are going to laugh a lot and you're going to cry probably. It's dark. So don't worry about it. No one's going to see you. But that way you leave, you feel like, whew. And so that's, I know this is, that's not really my, that's not the advice. But if, if you feel like you're not giving that to your audience, I, I, maybe this is a good way of saying it. <clears throat> my, I always think about what can I give my audience? What can I give them? So it's not about me. Even though I'm on stage and all eyes are on me, it's not about me. It's about what I can give you. So think about it like that. I hope, I hope, that, I hope that little pep talk gets people to come out and see my show because that's really what I'm trying to do. So for tickets, go to michaeljammon.com slash live. What about, do you need a college degree to become a screenwriter? Nope. No, no, no. You don't. You need to know how to write. Know anything about writing for video games? I know nothing about video games. Sorry. Do you remember the first joke you had that aired? I heard comedy writers never forget that. No, actually, I don't. <laughs> Maybe it's because I never had a joke of mine get on the air. <laughs> no, I don't remember that. What do you think about... Uh, I, but I do know I had a big joke on Just Shoot Me, and I've, I've talked about that. It's a long story, so I, I remember my first... Uh, uh, big joke on Just Shoot Me, but I don't remember my first joke. I remember my first, like when I say big joke, the first joke that like brought down the house. And I remember, I knew it was coming up. I go, here it comes, here it comes. And I, and I didn't watch the actors. I was on stage. I turned around to watch the audience. I was like, let's, because I wanted to see their faces and they went nuts. And I was like, and I'm like, I did it. I did it. What's the Bowie video link or name? Google Bowie art. And what he thinks about art. Just Google it. I don't have a, I can't find the link here because if I do, I'll cut out. Uh, 
will you write my story? I'm writing my story. Have you ever worked at a musical episode? How is it approached differently story-wise? Is it, sep- uh, is it separate between songwriters and staff writers? So I've only worked on once, and there was a guy on a show we did called Glenn Martin, DDS, and, uh, and then Adam Pava. He's, he writes a lot of movies, and he loves musical. And uh, he kept on begging me, please, let's do a musical. I'm like, Pava, I don't know how to do a musical. He goes, I'll figure it out. <laughs> so I'm like, okay, you figure it out. And he did. He wrote a musical. It was pretty good. <laughs> uh, his show is well worth the $35. Thank you, lovely Ann. He tells great stories and he does answer questions after the show. And he says hi after the show. I do say hi. I do say hi and I do answer questions. Uh, so thank you. Yeah, come. I hope you all come enjoy my show. What do you think about Tyler Mowry? Uh, I don't know who that is. I don't know who that is. Is it not great these days? I don't even know how to say his or her name. Is it not great these days for a male to write a spec pilot about a troubled female? Uh, it's not great. No, it's not great. Yeah. A couple of years ago, you could do it. But now they'll say, like, you know, write what you know. So write what you know. Uh, is it worth submitting the contest through Coverfly or other screenwriting platforms? Can those accolades from placing in comps help lead to selling a script? I, I don't have any experience with Coverfly. I don't want to badmouth them. I think you can find out yourself by going in a forum, asking a public forum. Maybe someone will answer it here. I don't. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna do that. Uh, but my my slow my short answer is um, usually no. Reboot, just shoot me. Slow Donnie forever. I'd work on a reboot to just shoot me. What are the first steps someone should take to learn how to write? Well, you could take my course if you want. That's a good step. MichaelJammon.com slash course. I'll walk you through the whole thing. What is your definition of art? I don't know. I don't know. Uh, and it's such a pretentious word. Before this, when I started writing this, I had my own little insecurities because I know I, other sitcom writers have written personal essays or, or stories or novels and I've read some of them and I always felt like they were written by sitcom writers probably because I see the wheels I can see the wheels turning in their writing I can go uh, they're just doing this X Y and so when I wrote my when I started writing this I didn't want anyone to think it was written by a sitcom writer I didn't like you know obviously I'm a sitcom writer and people will know that but I didn't want people to read it and think oh. It's just a sitcom. I, I, I don't have... So I wanted to elevate that. And I didn't know what that meant. And every freaking weekend, I'd say to my wife, is it art? Is it, What is art? We got into art. And my daughter, who is in art school, I'm paying for her to go to art school. I'm like, what's art? And she's like, I go, what are your teachers? How do your teachers define it? You know, and she wouldn't give me a good answer. Uh, I was like, I'm taking away your education. But I don't know what art is. I know what it can do, though. You know, David Bowie explained it to me. So I'm taking it from him. And to me, it feels right. Where he basically says, it's taking what's inside of you and helping you understand yourself and sharing it in a way that helps you understand yourself and helps others understand themselves. And and, and taking whatever pain is inside you and transforming it a little bit, elevating it, making it a little bit better so that, you know, like if I have, if I, if something is bothering me or I have some pain inside me, and I just complain about it, you don't want it. You don't want to hear that. Get this guy away from me. You don't want to hear my problems. You got your own problems. But if I'm able to uh, transform that into something better, something art, then you'll gladly take it from me. You'll glad, and you'll pay me for it because it's transcending. That to me is what art can do. Is that art? Is that like, does that, is that the definition of art? No, but that's how I look at it at least. That's how David Bowie helped me understand it. And David Bowie also said, uh, you have to get out of your comfort zone. So you should be in water that's a little too deep for you to touch the bottom in. If you, if, and, and, and that's when you do something special. And so that is also why I'm performing this, my show. Because I am not uh, a performer. I, I mean, I am now, but I wasn't before this, even though I work with a lot of actors and performers. So I'm in over my head. And I think people watch it and they go, oh, here's a guy who's swimming. They, I think they sense that. Here's a guy who's swimming in water that's a little too deep. And that's exciting. And I think it's meaningful. And that's why artists are always pushing themselves and trying something new. And Bowie himself, you know, obviously great musician, songwriter. But he also, he, was also, he tried acting. He tried 
art, fine art. I don't think he was a particularly great actor or a particularly great fine artist, but damn it, give him credit for trying. Give him credit for pushing himself out of his comfort zone. And that's why he was a great artist, even if you don't think he was a great actor. Uh, okay. Crossman says, yeah, we're going to trust Crossman's opinion on this. I had a script that was in the top 1% of Coverfly. Nothing happened because of that. There, there's your answer. Top one, doesn't get much better than top 1%. Uh, what do you find appealing about the four agreements? Oh, <laughs> I don't even know what they are. Uh, I, so I'm, I'm not in my room. Thank you for your answer to the art question. Awesome. Good. I hope that helps. It took me a long time to explain it. Lovely Ann posted a link, so maybe that's the link to the Bowie interview. Uh, yo! Uh, is that it? Oh, I get some questions over here. Hold on. Uh, how do I get your show to Ohio? I'll, it'll sell here. Oh, Dre. Uh, Dre Williams, I'd love to come to Ohio. I don't know what city you're in. They got a couple of cities in in Ohio. You know, DM me your, I have a list. I, you know, I don't know, maybe are you in Cleveland? Where are you? DM me your email address. And when I get there with the book tour, I'll, I'll, I'll give you a shout. Did Chuck Mangione bring his trumpet to table reads? <laughs> I, don't, I don't remember him bringing his trumpet to table reads. If he did, maybe, you know. Yes, and they're both of Bowie talking about art. Yeah. So those, no, these are not my shoes. I don't know, not my shoes. Uh, let's see. Uh, is there any other questions? I think that's it. Oh, are there some down here? Hold on, I'm scrolling. I'm scrolling. That's okay, that's it. I'm thinking about to bounce off. Everyone, thank you so much. Thank you so much for listening to my live. Tim says, I want to appreciate, thank you for the page. Keep it up. Yeah, thank you, Tim. Uh, get on my uh, watch list if you want, my free newsletter at michaeljammon.com slash watch list. Uh, we'll talk to Mark about doing a new season of Marin. Sure, bring it up with him. I don't think, I don't think he's into it, but okay, bring it up. Uh, okay, and come see my show. My Boston show, the tickets are going. So I hope to see you in Boston. If you're, if you're in the Boston area, I'm Amesbury, Massachusetts, November 12th and 13th, a paper orchestra, my hour-long show with a 20-minute Q&A. And then, of course, I'll be back in L.A. December 10th and 11th. Same New stories. If you've seen my show in L.A. before and you want to see it again, these are all new, sto- new stories in L.A. So it'll be a brand-new show to you. So you don't have to worry about that. Okay. Thank you up so much, everyone. For tickets, michaeljammon.com slash live. I'll see you there. And if you want to, me to come to your city, uh, either DM me your email address or just go to michaeljammon.com slash upcoming and enter your email information there. All right, everyone. I hope this helps. Be well. Have a great weekend. Bye-bye.